Good afternoon. I'm Jenny Matson with RPI Consultants, um, Director of Public Sector Solutions. And I'm Rick Whitten. I'm a Senior Infor Solution Architect with RPI. We're here today um, to help um, help you understand what um, Weiss Rice is. Rick, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So you've probably heard of Rice uh, reports, integrations, uh, conversions, and extensions. We've added in an extra letter, letter W for workflows. Uh, but really, if you think about Rice or Weiss in the big picture, it's really more about data. You know, it's about how you uh, move data around, present it, integrate it, um, uh, translate it, and then expand access to it. Yeah, so it's really what comes out of your Infor applications and what moves within the application. And as you are looking at making updates or changes to your system, it also can give you an idea of what opportunities might be available. Um, you may have paper you're still pushing around your organization that you'd like to get rid of. You may have ad hoc Excel reports that really aren't tied to the system. You're pulling data out of multiple systems and putting in in something and, and working in something that's not um, not integrated, or maybe you have email chains that are going all around the office, you know, to do different approval processes. So it kind of allows you to sort of um, tether out what you know what might um, what, what might be able to be improved with the project. So um, it, with that, why it is important to organizations is because. Um, it's really, you know, everything that you get asked about when we're um, working with clients to plan for projects. What is it going to cost? How long is it going to take me? And what am I going to get out of the system? And all of those things um, are wrapped in to what you're seeing on the screen today. Um, in terms of the big picture, it's, it's really, you know, it's it's all of these things that are listed above. Do you see that, Rick? Yeah, yeah. So I think that uh, one of the things here um, that uh, that really stands out to me is really more about business transformation. And this is a good opportunity um, if you're planning on doing a migration or uh, uh, or uh, implementing um, version 11 or Infor Supply Chain or excuse me, Infor Financial Supply Management or Global HR. Um, you know, you're really looking at a, at, at a chance to change the way you do business. And Rice Weiss is kind of at the heart of all of that. So it helps you really, you know, um, make sure that you understand what the development effort might be, how to properly estimate your project, and um, figure out if you have the right resources to do that. And um, sometimes, um, you know, internally, that's a hard thing to do. Um, you, you know, you may have business analysts or somebody in a PMO office that can come kind of with an outside bird's eye view to it. Or you may need to be looking to, um, you know, somebody with some expertise like RPI to say, hey, you know, these are systems and processes you do every day. Have you taken into account different pieces that, that may get forgotten? Yeah, um, I think that and I think too, Jenny, just to interrupt, I think that, you know, this is the place where you probably find that you've either overestimated or underestimated the amount of time it's going to take to do these things. Um, and, and I think what you said was important about resources. Um, uh, generally, uh, firms have a pretty good, or organizations have a pretty good understanding of, uh, of their internal resourcing and what the skill sets are internally. Um, but have you really thought about what it takes to get through one of these projects and uh, the, type, the type of allocation that that resource is going to have during the project? Yeah, and resourcing is something that often is a little bit harder to, um, you know, to uh, put into a formula and um, those skill sets. So, so it, it's a little bit more of a variable that we see in projects that's often overlooked, I think. Um, I and so, you know, we wanted to give you kind of an idea of what it might look like. And so this is a really generic and oversimplified um, representation of an ERP. But it's kind of a starting point, right? It gives you a vis visual for things that may um, all be coming in and going out of the ERP system. Um, and, you know, I'd like to ask you today as good Infor uh, system uh, users, 
um, and community members and RPI Tech Talk attenders. Um, if you might be willing to type into the, the chat, you know, if you've had a project where maybe one of these um, integration points or a super critical report or a system was left off, um, because that's how we learn from each other, you know, um, going ahead and, and sharing those information. Like, you know, be sure you look at X, Y, or Z or this process um, to make sure that it's encapsulated uh, into your plan. Um, Rick, as a solution architect, uh, you know, you're, you're designing um, what the roadmap for projects will look like um, all the time. What areas do you see um, getting missed the most often? I think the biggest place that things get missed are, are with reports. I think that uh, generally people, uh, they may not know exactly what they have. Um, and, it, you know, it, we'll talk about this more later, but, um, but even though you have reports now going to a new system, some of those reports might be standard delivery reports. Some of those might be um, moved to a different tool. Um, so that, that's really where I see the most, um, the most efficient scoping is on the reporting piece of this, uh, piece of the RICE, RICE uh, matrix. Well, and the other thing that I've heard from clients who've had the opportunity um, to get to Cloud Suite already is that um, it's such a data-rich presentation layer that folks aren't used to. Um, that some of the data is just in line. So it takes, it, it's, it's a business switch for mm -hmm. users going from, I need to run a report to work to the system is now presenting me data to work with. Um, and yeah. just because the system's set up that way, that doesn't mean that the users will be um, feeling comfortable enough day one to make that, that shift. Um, so right, there's lots right. of things to take into account. Yeah, it's certainly a paradigm shift, uh, and it will be a paradigm shift for a lot of the users. So um, what are some of the challenges that we see with this, Rick? <laughs> so <laughs> I think the number one challenge we have, um, well, there's, there's two really that come to mind. Um, I'm sure there's more, um, but one is communication. I think that, um, you know, uh, IT speaks one language and functional users speak another language. Um, and neither one of those are wrong. It's just there's a difference in how uh, each one of those groups views uh, rice material or rice items. Uh, so an IT uh, person uh, really is, is thinking about the, the tools and the methods in the background, and the functional user is really thinking about the process. So bringing those folks together and uh, mediating or facilitating a conversation between those two different groups uh, can can result in a lot of uh, a lot of good information. You get a lot out of those uh, out of those conversations. Uh, the second sure. would be uh, the second would be training. Um, I think that there's um, and and I'm sure that most organizations are this way. There's a there's some tribal knowledge or some folklore that happens, or that uh, you know a person was trained to do a job, but they were probably trained by a person that was trained by another person. Uh, there was no real real formal training. And there's a sometimes a lack of understanding of what happens in the process of what you do, what happens before or what happens after, or really why you're doing the thing you're doing. So I think that that has a, a, a big impact on, um, on trying to gather information when it comes to rice rice uh, materials. When a lot of times we see that the ERP is not the top priority, so that leads to maybe a lack of, of training or, um, you know, documentation that's kind of pieced together. And so, you know, as you're preparing um, some of these uh, processes and, and trying to get a hold on your system, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of bump up what you're doing in terms of your documentation. And especially yeah. if you're working with somebody um, outside to help you do this, that's that's a definite takeaway um, that should come out of any of these exercises. Yeah, I, I think having a fresh set of eyes who, someone who isn't entrenched in the process itself, uh, that can lend itself to, uh, to better results uh, when, you're, when you're going through these exercises of putting all of your rice waste materials together. 
So like in the um, days of COVID and pandemic and being, you know, with your families the whole time, I kind of liken it to um, my husband opens the refrigerator and he goes, where is the mustard? And I need to like go look in the refrigerator to pull out the mustard. But then I might have to have him or my younger son say, is this, is this expired? Can we use this? (laughs) You know, so it's kind of that same, that same process. Sometimes when you're too close to something, you can't see what's right or, there in front of you. Or it's right in front of him if he's like me. Uh, it's right in front of me and I can't see it, so. Uh, right, that, that, well, we won't get that, into that part of the whole discussion. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, I, think, um, though, I think too, though, to get uh, you know beyond that, there's, um, you know, we talked a little bit about having fresh eyes. I think that this really needs to be treated with some, with some deference um, to have, um, to start a project, even if it's not a project manager that's running it, if it's you know a business analyst or someone, to run a project to gather all of this together and get it into one place, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a few minutes. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the stakes are the stakes are high when it comes to uh, when it comes to rice weiss because it can it can get out of hand very quickly if if you don't understand what you have and what you need. Right, and when you look at this the slide, we you know we kind of titled this sheer volume. Just just a lot of different integration components, um, configuration components. You know, um, think different types of files that may be coming in and out of the system, and and you know what's the business purpose for that? Does that business purpose still exist today? A lot of users took um, the upgrade to version ten and treated it as kind of a technical upgrade mm-hmm. and didn't really take advantage of some of the, the features that were there that are now available. So the application has lots um, lots in it that might allow you to um, kind of trim off some of these custom things. But, you mm-hmm. know, there's there's just there's just a lot there, right? Um, it's a lot. to be taking taking a, taking a look at. Yeah, it's it's a lot, and it's no small task. Um, I, I doubt there's one person in the world that knows all of these, and if there is, maybe you don't really want to talk to them, but <laughs> they may not be a very uh, fun person to talk to. But uh, <laughs> it, it's just a it's a lot, and uh, you know, as part of a project, you're going to have people who are trained in this and probably trained in specific areas of this. Um, but it, it's no small task to understand, uh, you know during a project, what you have now and what you're going to have in the future, and then which one of these tools or methods you're going to use to uh, to either access that data or move it. So we made this seem like super hard and nobody probably wants to try to do this anymore. So shall we talk <laughs> about like really like how, how we approach this with clients and, and what uh, people can do themselves to kind of get yeah. started on it? I'm going to go to the yeah. next one and get rid of all these words. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. Yeah, so how do you tackle it? Um, so I think before we talk about what you should do, let's talk about what you shouldn't do. So I think, uh, you know, in my opinion anyway, I think it, it's the wrong thing to just send a spreadsheet to a department and say, fill out all your reports and integrations and send this back to me when you get done. So generally what happens is if you get the spreadsheet back, um, it probably is not complete. Um, and, and as often doesn't have business reasons around why you have those interfaces or reports. Um, so I think treating it like a workshop, um, you know, we talked about having either a business analyst or a project manager or a third party come in, <coughs> excuse me, and, and kind of workshop this and turn it into a, a mini project. The, one of the uh, advantages of having a third party come in is that often, uh, you know, as a consulting firm, we'll have, um, we'll have some documentation or, or some uh, templates that you can use to kind of get started. Um, <clears throat> you know, we can facilitate those those meetings and, um, and, and help you understand not only what you have, but why you have it. Um, sometimes there's a, a, you know, we talk about the, the expensive phrase of, well, that's the way we've always done it. Um, you may find that a lot of those reports are redundant or, or you don't need them. Um, or they can be combined into other reports, and especially in some of the the new tools that are uh, in the uh, in the uh, version 11. With Burst, you can write one report but send it out in different views to different people. And it's so, not um, just about the so there's, reports. There's, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say it's not just about the reports too. I mean, there may be custom jobs, custom forms. Mm-hmm. 
Um, there may be custom applications or third party applications that you're using today. And the Infor system has matured and become more feature rich so that you don't have to utilize all those systems. And right. it's an opportunity to kind of take an inventory of, of those as well. And um, when their contracts are expiring and you know where you might be able to um, reduce some costs from those areas um, and you know um, be able to time your project accordingly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that um, I think we're seeing that a lot more. I know that in, in a lot of conversations I've had with clients, um, you know, scoping new projects, uh, they are trying to get rid of all these best of breed products and move it all into one uh, one integrated system. Um, I think that you know, ten or fifteen years ago, best of breed was the way to go. That was you know, most CIOs and CFOs that that was uh, the way that they wanted their systems architected. And, and I see a lot more that, um, that, that that's all moving into one integrated system where they can get a total view because ultimately an ERP is about reporting and uh, you know, they can get a total view of, of how, that, how all of those uh, systems, integrated systems report out and up to the, uh, the C-suite of the organization. Sure. Um, and I think you were touching on this a little bit, and I maybe jumped in too, but, you know, categorizing each of these processes and trying to put them into business group and um, mapping them to the new technology is something that is oftentimes hard for folks that um, haven't had much exposure to it. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why it's great that folks attend things like these tech talks. We're not doing user groups as much as we used to right now, um, you know, but there are some virtual events that let you get your hands on things. Um, but there's only so much you can um, you can know about the system from those tools, right? So, um, yeah. so that's where expertise can come in. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that, you know, we talked about templates or, or even if you're using a spreadsheet to, um, to kind of group items together uh, maybe they have similar similar attributes, or they're using a similar tool, or they're in a similar business area, or it's something like uh, you have, you know, in version 10, you have a COBOL program, and then you have a job schedule that comes after that, and then you have a script to transmit the data somewhere. All that should be grouped together so you understand the entire process, and then nothing's getting missed in, in the process of uh, developing those tools. And then looking at that whole process also allows you to see what skill sets are needed along the way, right? Um, so, um, you know, maybe part of one of those things is requiring some security and, and transmission outside the system. So who needs to be involved as you look at architecting that in the new system? You know, that yeah. might put in a different layer into, you know, kind of the what you need for your project from a, a yeah. skill set. Yeah, resourcing your project, that's a, that's a big one. And uh, if, you, if you have a good grasp on this, um, you know, the, the functional step, um, it, it follows a time frame. We have, you know, six weeks of SIT, just for instance, uh, you know, and four weeks of UAT. But where in this, in this time frame does the, uh, does the development for rice material or rice material, um, where, where does that take place? And do we have the allotted resources available uh, they all have full-time jobs, so we want to make sure that, you know, if you have the resources, uh, do you have the resources on staff? Are they allocated to the right um, to the right items? Do they have the skill sets to develop these, and are they available? Yeah, and and if if some of the users don't have the skill sets because these are new tools, how do you work with somebody who helps you know bolster those individuals up and get them ready? For for right. this uh, for the new stuff that's that's yeah, to come. I, yeah, I think any implementer worth their salt is going to going to do some training, and and I think the best type of training is training that takes place throughout the project, and not just mm -hmm. you know train them and let them loose. You have to train them, mentor, um, counsel, all those good things. Uh, but it's going to take place in several parts of the project, and then be reinforced by actually doing the work. Right. And it's sort of like what we do for our health checks of projects, right? It's yeah. it's throughout the process just to make sure that everything is going along as planned. Um, the training is reinforced. People remember it. They're able to expand on it as they get a better grasp of what the system is actually doing and they see more. 
Um, yeah, and I think so, I think the goal of yeah I think the goal of any project is when we leave or when the consulting partner leaves, you can support the system or develop new things once uh, once we're gone. Right, and and I think by doing an appropriate um, rice wise, we talked about that too. It it gives you an idea of areas um, and opportunities for improvement. So maybe you know that there's things that you want to get done in phase one. Maybe those are the things that will um, allow you to discontinue certain products and recoup some maintenance dollars on those or what have you. Um, but there's also, you know, maybe goals for stage two and three and having right. um, having a feeling of what's left and is not automated or that, you know, is on, on the roadmap map helps you keep moving with the system and not get stagnant after the project's over. So right. what do we think the destination is, Rick? Well, the destination is, is success. <laughs> You've, uh, you finished <laughs> the project, you're on time, you're on budget. <laughs> All the good things that Everybody you Everybody is happy. Right, everybody's happy. Uh, you know, and, and that, that roadmap or that road to that is really about, you know, accurate budgeting. You know, nobody has just unlimited funds to get things done. Um, you're, you've right-sized um, for scope and complexity. You've, um, you've got the right people at the right time in the right roles. Um, you've lessened your risk. Um, uh, you've, uh, you've transformed your business. This is, like I've said before, this is a once in a generation opportunity uh, to transform your business. Um, this, is, this is a chance to get rid of those. Well, that's the way we've always done it, scenarios and get to the digital transformation that everybody talks about that, you know, that golden path of digital transformation. Uh, and then with all of that, right. I think, you know, it's, it's a successful project. Exactly. And, and you know what you signed up to get out of the system and what you thought the gains were going to be, and you've actually realized those gains, right? right. And so, uh, you know, you and I have been around the, the M4 ERP space for a long time. So the last time you really had an opportunity um, to do this kind of thing, and I'm going to hold this up even though Rick's embarrassed, <laughs> this is my millennial bug from the year 2000. So, um, you know, so that was the last time that a lot of major business transformation projects took place. And there may have been some things that happened in the interim um, and maybe some really good enhancements and you've stayed on top of your ERP, but we don't always see that. Clients right. kind of are, you know, in a spectrum of, of what they've been able to do. Yep. So I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yep. It's that 20 year gap. It's the magic number, right? <laughs> right. And this is not something that, um, you know, that you're going to get a hundred percent, right. But, um, at least you have really kind of a realistic idea of, of what the requirements now are for the project. Um, and you haven't done the overestimating or underestimating because if you do the way overestimating, you know, it may be quite a while before you get these dollars. So you're really looking for a realistic um, a view of what of what it's going to look like and what it's going to take. Do you think we're agree. ready for questions, Rick? I think we are. And you know, we're going to have a special guest joining us for question and answer. Um, Richard Stout will be will be joining us. So um, please. Um, Please go ahead and uh, type in your questions, and that's all we have so far. Thank you. Great. So it looks like we have um, a couple uh, comments here. One came over, um, we're not using candidate space at all with our TA solution. We had to build an entire custom workflow to bypass candidate space so we could have 24-7 uptime experience to allow applicants to apply to jobs. So that's a whole other integration point to put into that M4 integration slide. Yeah, thank you. I mean, right, we, we learn from each other, and, and, and that's, that's a good point. Um, yeah, and, and also a good point that uh, you should have some uh, you should have some contingency in your budget for, for things that you may not anticipate. Right. Um, so we have another question here. How do I know if um, reports get replaced by standard delivered reports in version 11? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there are listings out on Info Extreme that you can download. 
that have all the report names on them, and that's for both uh, FSM and uh, HCM. Uh, they're usually pretty descriptive, um, and you can, uh, in most cases, do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I think, though, that the, uh, you know, that, again, the takeaway is that, you know, have some contingent contingency in your budget for those things that uh, you may not have been able to map. Um, uh, and, and hopefully you're using a consulting group or, or, or hopefully RPI uh, to do your migration, and we can do that mapping for you. Yeah. Um, oh, here's another one about um, how, you know, if I'm going to be tasked to kind of start this and do this, how should I start individually? Can I, can I take that one, Rick? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I, you know, I think one of the things you can do is start to just be mindful and pay attention um, to your your workday and the processes you're doing throughout the week, and start taking note and creating uh, an inventory. We said that spreadsheets don't don't work to do this whole process, but that doesn't mean that a brainstorming list and kind of an inventory isn't um, isn't helpful and something you should encourage. Um, you know, folks that will be on your team to start to start creating, so you can build out that web. Yeah, um, I think it's, uh, spreadsheets are always a good starting point. Uh, it's not the end all be all, and it's certainly not the entire process, but it's a it's a good place to start. Yeah, and then there's another question about what do you anticipate the development period for a rice waste to be? Yeah, what do you think, so Rick? that's. Yeah, so that's really going to be dependent on your project and how much uh, rice weiss you have uh, in your inventory, um, and that's where a consulting partner can help. Uh, you know, we've done this lots of times, and uh, and usually based on the discovery and um, some workshops, uh, we can put that together and have a, have a have a good timeline about what it's going to take. That also goes back to resources, you know, how many resources and in, in, you know internally do you have to get that work done? And are you going to take the lion's share of those, or is the consulting partner going to do that for you? Yeah. Well, and a few other things that um, that I thought of that um, I've seen that have gotten you know kind of forgotten um, along the way are things you know that maybe relate to third parties. Um, as some of you might remember, I worked for MHC for a long time. And I do remember that a lot of uh, components or little pieces that MHC would take care of for you were kind of outside of what you were thinking. So thinking along, you know, your document management, document output, um, other, you know, ancillary reporting systems, um, you know, things like that might help. Um, also, things that you don't do very often, like, you know, like the once a year charitable kind of campaigns. Um, modifications that you've done through Design Studio. I know a lot of people had done a lot of things around um, uh, open enrollment to make that process easier and those forms look easier. And do they carry forward or what, what is that going to look like? Um, and then parts of automation. And I think we kind of alluded to this before and Richard probably could um, could talk about that. Like you might have thought of one of part of the a transmission, but there's a security component or a pass off to another system where data comes back, and that whole thing maybe is is a challenge uh, to test, like you know EDI or um, uh, benefit transmissions, things like that. So yeah, sure, that's absolutely a, a a challenge in terms of the development period. Usually, you just have a couple of months, um, and I, I think those um, third-party integrations, those vendor interfaces, are, are definitely a high priority, um, especially the, um, those that run every day to support critical processes. And then, um, you know, while it's important to have visibility on all of the data exchange needs, um, you know, something like a once-a-year um, charitable program or you know, something uh, that's not a uh, uh, high volume of data um, happening on a recurring basis that's highly structured. Um, you know, those types of items typically fall down to the bottom of the list and I think are okay to um, go live with um, without and just consider that uh, enhancement opportunity post-live. 
So I see we have another question that I didn't uh, I didn't see before. Um, so the assumption is that a company doesn't do an official pre-planning project to gather the rice waste information. It still has to happen in the planning phase, right? So what's the be benefit of doing the separate um, exercise for the purpose of the project? Um, you know, I I think it it gives you the ability to really see um you know where you have some opportunities to transform and you're maybe it gives you kind of that um that vision for what the project can be um which sometimes gets lost in 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 the middle and i think it can do some things to help you really understand your budget and plan for that um rick yeah I, Richard, yeah i think too that um you know a couple of things so typically those uh those pre-planning um, engagements are they comprise more than just the rice rice but that's an important part of it um, so I think that if you can get out ahead of um, of any of any of that uh, any of that stuff uh, that's going to happen during the project because you have you have really a, a finite amount of time to get a project done it just can't go on forever right um, so if you can if you can do that planning up front uh, it it, it helps during the discovery and planning phase um, uh, during your project uh, so that you're not having overruns on your project timeline. Yeah, it's about, it's about resource forecasting, right? So if you can do the analysis of the development work before the project starts, um, then you can budget your project appropriately to uh, get the work done that needs to be done over the time period in which it needs to be accomplished, um, and you know that you have the right resource to do so, it's totally okay to, you know, not have that information um, beforehand. But the implication is that that during the actual planning phase of the project, you probably you know have a timeline that firms up uh, before getting to the point that you really understand the the development workload. So at that point, um, you know, one of your one of your constraints is, is already set. So you need to be flexible either in uh, scope, uh, which would mean you know potentially agreeing to go live with um, w without certain items, or uh, you know resource capacity. So uh, having the ability to scale up resourcing um, as needed, um, you know, during that development period. And the the last is more of a comment. Um, everyone, uh, this this person really appreciated the RPI cat. And Rick, could you tell us that cat's name? <laughs> That's Petey, or uh, affectionately called Little One. Uh, she's a rescue uh, that was uh, playing around outside when she was a kitten, and uh, decided to bring her in. And now she's my constant companion. She likes to uh, sit on my keyboard, so. That's awesome. She helps with data conversion. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. We hope a little one staying warm. Yeah. <laughs> it, you, you too, well, Rick. We, we also hope you're staying warm. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of it for the 